heard something fairly profound there, and I'd like to see if I got it right. What I heard you say is personalized medicine is a powerful force and a powerful agent for change, but personalized certainty is actually what we want because it's, that's the decision-making tool that ultimately makes it really personal in our case. Did I get that right? Certainty is going to be so important because you've got to ensure these are life and death decisions. I mean, these are literally life and death decisions. And as I say, the thing that really brings it home, if you're going to withhold a treatment, then you better be certain. Now, increasingly, for complex diseases, we can start to unpick that certainty. But it's still a case of interpretation. There are still a lot of validation and regulatory aspects around that. But it's got to be something we've got to drive for. So if chemo is the called for therapy, and yet it's only effective in 20% of the cases, I might feel confident enough from these tests to say, I'm in the 80%. I'm not losing my hair. I'm not going for this. How soon before that becomes common? On the particular example you've given, it's already the case. There are tests out there at the moment that people are actually making specifically that call. It's going to depend then on how broadly applicable the tests become. Will it ever become popular for the common cold? Maybe, maybe not. But for complex, life-threatening, significant and expensive diseases, you will find increasingly these characterization techniques and technologies beginning to pervade the clinic. So I saw that amazingly complex chart. What, what I came to mind is that there could be 50 million variations of cancer, and I might have variation 38,124,265. And so eventually, I'll be able to characterize Jay's cancer versus Jer's cancer. Is Even that where we're heading? Eventually. We're currently picking out the big differences. But increasingly, if the rate of technology increases and in how we characterize proteins and DNA, we'll be able to dig down at that level. Wow. One last question. One of the audience sent it in on the spot. Me. Why is the, the, why does the, the, the female breast seem to be such a target or a, a, an opportunity for cancer? Is there something specifically about the metabol metabolites or the proteins in the breast area that make it so susceptible for cancer formation and promotion? It's an area, I think, where you seek a lot of uh, cell growth in any case. Clearly, you know, it's part of the, 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 the elements of puberty, of, of uh, sexual organs. So there's a lot of cell division, cell growth in any case there. That means that signals for growth are constantly being sent in there. Also, it's a very variated space. It's actually quite difficult to detect and direct exactly where a cancer is. So not alone is an area where cancers occur, it's an area where cancers are difficult to isolate. Well, it certainly seems very hopeful. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Jay.